What's up guys, Edge of Bricks here. Today you will see the final episode of the series, The Siege of Bricks Conquest. After many weeks my project is finally ready. It was a lot of fun, but also hard work and many problems to be solved. I'll tell you more about the dimensions in a moment, but believe me, the castle is huge. Sit back and see what I have for you in the final episode of this series. First, I just wanted to remind you that this project is also a collab. Together with my friend Cubebrick, we are building the second edition of our Siege of Bricks project. The first collab was in 2020. I built a diorama with working trebuchet and a Cubebrick fragment of the castle. This time I'm building a castle and Cubebrick will attack. My part is ready. Now we are waiting for the final episode from Cube Break. We didn't manage to show the first edition together because we live in other cities. But this time it will be different. If all goes well, both projects will stand side by side at the exhibition in October. If I go to this event, you will see the movie and how both mocks look next to each other. In order not to miss the report from this exhibition, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Let's start with dimensions of this design. The castle is very big and very tall. The dimensions of the base plate are 42 by 55 cm. The height of the main tower from the ground is 75 cm. It's really very tall tower. I've never built such tall project before. During construction I made 15 house from Bricklink. I think the whole project is about 20,000 parts. That's a lot. Also I used 45 mini features here. To make it easier to build, I divided the whole thing into the base plates. At the beginning I built the base plate with the gate. Then the second part with the main tower. I started the construction of the castle with small drawing and placing the walls so that everything would fit. See what my plan looked like. The end result is a bit different. I had many new ideas during the construction. In the final episode, I will discuss my castle in a faster way, without unnecessary extension. If you are interested of details and how I built the next stages, of course I encourage you to check the previous episodes. As you know, when I built my dioramas, I always do some tutorials or instructions. This time I also prepared a few things that you can build. In the second episode you will see a tutorial for a small build tree. For a large one I have an instruction on replicable.com. In episode 3 you will see a tutorial for my little ballista. In the fifth episode you could see a small four sloping roof. The instruction is also on replicable. More about this in the description. Let's start our discussion with the terrain. In this project I combined two techniques. You can see layers of terrain from the side and freeform in front. The castle was built on rocks. There are quite a lot of them here. On the left side I built a road that has a lot of details made with snot technique. This is where my castle will connect to the mock from Kubrick. Plants are a very important element of this mock. There are a lot of them here. At the beginning, the Siege of Bricks conquest was supposed to take place in the fall. However, together with Cube Brick, we decided that the siege would take place in the summer. I had to change my plans a bit, and all the yellow leaves I bought will be used in another project. I've built two types of tree, big and small. There are five of them. There are also many other plants, like flowers, some bushes and mushrooms. Ok, let's move on to the most important thing, time for the castle. It's huge. I thought I had a lot of light bush grey parts, but during construction it quickly turned out that it was definitely not enough. My fortress has many interesting solutions and ideas. Let's discuss everything step by step. To get to my castle you need to go through the gate. It seems easy, but when you see Harrow you can forget about further rendering. Harrow is very big and strong. 
I made simple mechanism for raising and lowering. See how it works. At the back of the gate there is a small room with doors on the sides and a ladder leading up. Upstairs we have a lot of space for observers. There is even something to eat. Every castle needs walls. They are also in my project and quite a lot. The walls are very high. The Raven Knights even have a ladder, but the chances of getting up are very small. There are many defenders here, including seven archers who will show no mercy to the enemy. I added wooden rings on the walls so that no one would fall. There are also some details like the chest and the table. Next to the gate, I've built another thing that the enemy should be afraid of. It is a small tower with ballista on it. The ballista has a long range and will easily keep the enemy army out of the gate. The ballista is a simple build. Like I said before, I have a tutorial for it in episode 3. Let's stay with the first base plate for a moment. Behind the gate there is a first courtyard. Here we have a mechanism to open the harrow and a weapon rack. There is a lot of space here. A few pikemen will fit. Time for the second base plate. I built a very tricky thing here, the underground. You can get here by stairs that lead up to the first courtyard. I built a basement here with barrel and bottles in the chest. They contain delicious wine that my army will drink after winning the battle. On the other side there is a dungeon with the first prisoner in them. The ghost could be not missing in the good dungeon. Importantly, I installed such lamps in the basement. The second gate leads to the main courtyard of the castle, but be careful, I've installed a trap here. Just pull this item and wooden blocks fall on the heads of the enemies. Time for the second courtyard. At the front you can see a wooden balcony, from which the king speaks to the army. He just got some letter from the commander. There is a door to the main tower at the bottom. Next to it I have added two targets for archers. There is also a place for horse. Next to it there is a small high card. There is also a small stage where the bard sings. On the right side there is a ladder leading to the walls. In the fifth episode I showed you the new tower. Currently it's slightly higher than before. I added windows here. Now the bell is even more visible. This tower has four sloping roof, for which I made a PDF instructions. It's time for the last thing I've built, and which you will see for the first time today. This is the main tower of the castle. It's very large, 75 cm high. It has several windows on each side. I made a such niche in the front and back. There are such slopes at the bottom. I think they look great and match to the battlements. There is a large flag of black falcons on the tower. From a distance you can see who this castle belongs to. I made one more room at the top of the tower. This is the wizard chamber. You can see a bookcase in the back. I think it looks great. There is also a comfortable armchair, a desk and a candlestick. This part of the tower has a lot of windows. At the top there is four sloping roof, which is much larger than the previous one. It's also bigger than my previous mob, the tricky ambush. I've perfected even more the technique of building this roof. I haven't done the instruction for it. Maybe I'll do it in some time. I've already said a lot. So, it's time for sum up the final episode. And, how do you like this project? 
It took a long time to build, but it was worth it. I had a great time building it. I hope you too. And what do you think? Will my enemy get this castle? I already have new ideas for mobs. Castle will also appear. I'm going back to Star Wars for a while. I wanted to build some vehicles and maybe some diorama. That's it. Write in the comment how you like the Siege of Bricks conquest. And also remember about thumbs up. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.